Rob, Joe Dumars, what is it, executive vice president yep. now in the league? Yep. And um, basketball operations in the NBA. He came, of course, great player, Hall of Fame player, and was a great GM with the Pistons. First black Got him GM a championship to ever win a uh, the- championship. Was he? Yeah. Wayne Embry was a GM, first black GM, but he was, I don't know if he was in Milwaukee when they won it with Kareem or Lou Alcindor I don't think at so. that time. I think Joe was Yeah, first. it might have been right after that. But um, he came out in the story in The Athletic today and said what you and I have said, and we're not, you know, doctors, we're not uh, scientists. We, we We were just speaking off of, the things we had heard in our interviews with doctors on the show or even talking to doctors, you know, by ourselves on our off time um, from covering the league for so many years, decades, and from observing how uh, much players today are getting hurt in comparison to players 20, 25 years ago or even 10, 15 years ago before low management really became a thing. And you and I have concluded, had concluded a while ago, that the low management stuff is a farce. Big time. And Joe Dumars came out today and said that they have new scientific data that says their low management has zero effect on players getting injured or staying healthy. And, Rob, I'm glad Joe did it. Now, you brought this up with Eddie House, and I think you're right on the money because I thought the same thing. Part of this is the league wanting to get this message out to ESPN, yep. and Turner, Turner, and all the places that they have their games on. Because I'm, I'm, you know how much I love basketball. I've covered it for nearly 30 years. And obviously loved it as a fan. I am so sick and tired of looking forward to a big Thursday night game. And then you turn it on or you find out a couple hours before the game that the stars aren't playing. Or You've one been of saying the big it all stars year, isn't like playing. how sick. Yeah. Like, like here it is, another game I've been looking forward to and nobody's playing. I told you when I went to that uh, uh, Dallas Mavericks uh, Lakers, Lakers game, game. with yep. my family. And I, we were fortunate that Luka and Kyrie played and Anthony Davis, was no LeBron, but we were fortunate three of the four stars Chris played. Right. But there was a question, and you, it's know, a you shame never you know. You even think that way. Right. Yeah, it, it, and we, Rob, it looks, we don't have data, but it looks like players are getting hurt more than ever. And what... A lot of ex-athletes have told us, and doctors, is that they don't think the players today are building up the resistance in their muscles that players used to have. They're not practicing as hard or as much. They're obviously not playing as often. And so when you get in the heat of battle and you're pushing it to the limit, you are more, you are more prone to injury. Than if you, you know, had been pushing it constantly. And so that, I think, is a big problem. And, Rob, I've also said this. And I think there were analytics and analytics experts who definitely had science that said the human body's not built to play 82 games. I mean, I talked to people in the league that said that was a science. And, you know, I believe it. But I always said this, Rob. And you, you know this. I said most high-performance, highly productive careers, or many of them, they push you beyond what the science probably would say is, the lim- is your limit. My wife is a medical doctor. I watched her be on call for a, a weekend straight and get maybe five hours of sleep over the entire weekend. Or go a day and a half, two days without sleep. And, and she has she's to perform. dealing with life and death. Right? right. She has to perform. Rob, you know on Wall Street, and I know some guys who when they first get out of college and they want to be in finance and they work on Wall Street 
They're working 90 to 120 hours a week. And part of the reason they're doing that, or Wall Street, I think, is doing that, is to weed people out. Exactly. You're and some guys weed decide, out I don't want to do it. Right. I don't want to do it. And, right, and I've heard things like a lot of, and you know, this is not a secret. A lot of those guys on Wall Street use cocaine and all these stuff to stimulate them and keep themselves up and awake and alert and all of that. And again, science would say both of those instances and, and many more are beyond what you should be doing. And yet people do them constantly. And I think this, the NBA, uh, baseball, whatever it is, baseball, we see it with the pitch counts and other things. I think it's the same thing, Rob. I think um, guys have shown in the history, through the history of the game that your, your body can do it. Rob, how much have we talked about pitching when guys used to throw 20 complete games a year? And, you know, Nolan Ryan pitched till he's in his 40s. And, and we and talked was throwing, about. Uh, God, tons of innings. We a talked year. about he threw Chris in one game, 230 pitches. In one game. <laughs> now, <laughs> if you throw half of that, that's a lot, right? right. I mean, and, 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 the, and we see pitchers going down left and right. And so it's a far and, – and, Rob, I do think some of it, and I don't mean to – I don't want to – I don't want people to take this the wrong way or negatively. I do think, Rob, some of this is people that never play these sports just looking at the data and just saying, no, there's no way they can go out there and do that. And be the same. No, they're not the same in the first three innings as they are in the, the last three. Like, right. you know, like that kind of stuff. Yep. Some guys, I, I, I always brought it up, Chris, but I mentioned this. When Tom Seaver struck out 19 San Diego Padres, he finished the game with 10 straight strikeouts. So he didn't fade. Wow, right. At the end, he finished right. on a flurry. He struck out the last 10 to strike. He struck out nine through the first six, through the first six innings and then 10 to end wow. the game. He would never get that shot today. Never Rob. get that shot. And no, oh, he, that's a moment you remember, and all Mets and Seaver fans remember. Always that. remember that's that. That's robbing fans. That's exactly today it. when right today when you take a guy out. That's robbing fans. I remember Rob. I went to see as a kid. We lived in Indianapolis. I, I was probably in fourth or fifth grade, and of course, Doctor J was my favorite player. I didn't care about the Pacers. I mean, I, I wanted to go. My dad took me to see Dr. J, right? And he played, fortunately. But had he sat out, I would have been crushed. And that was the only, that's the only Pacers game I ever remember going to in the five years I lived there. Right. You know? And so. And that was your moment. That's Yep. That was it. And that's happening to too many fans every day. And look, I, I think it's late. But, and even, I think some of it is. Let's just get this TV money. If the NBA is going to really follow through on this, Rob, then I'm all for it. But if it, if it's just let's get the money, like they got to do something. And then something. go back to it. I, I, right. I, they got to bring that. You had, I think you had a great idea. Chris, I, I think that that's tell the only, your idea. Yeah, my, I think it's the only fair idea because we're not assuming that people aren't hurt. So we, I, right. we don't want to do that. All I'm saying is if you have to miss a game, you got to miss the next three. So a total of four games. So you'll be on, the, like, baseball. You're on a 10-day disabled list. You can't come back. Once you go, Chris, you can't come. Oh, I'm feeling better yep. now today. No, you're out for those 10 days, and you can't come back. You're not eligible to come back. I love it. And then you go out, and then a team would really have to think about it. Do we really want Kevin Durant to miss four games because we don't want him to play against some bad team tonight? No, right. we don't. We can't afford him to miss four games. So you really got to think about it. And if he's hurt, then you're giving him sufficient time to get healthy and come back. And it ain't a big deal. But if you do that, take a game off, Chris, three times, you would miss 12 games. <laughs> right. So you would right. never take three games and, off. And remember, you also, now you the rule is you have to play at least 65 games to be eligible for the postseason awards and so on and so forth, all NBA, all that. So, yeah, I, I, I love that because – the. For those that might not have thought of it, um, 
the it you can't like just say, man, players got to start playing eighty two games, right? No, and you they can't. can't sit out because it's easy for a player to just say, I got back spasms, I got a sore hand, like things you can't really measure, right? Right, it ain't like it's I got a broken leg or something right. like that. We could see right. if somebody says I got a twinge in my back, you really can't see that, right? What are you gonna do? They can sit out, and so I think it's a great idea. Um. And so I, I, I just this is out of control, and it is hurting the game. But I, think it's gonna right. hurt the bottom line if the players, you know, be, if they get a lesser TV contract because people aren't watching when the stars are out, and um, it, it just gonna it's gonna hurt the popularity of the game too, Rob. We talk about it all the time with boxing. It's a different circumstance in that they took their games off free t- or their fights off free TV. It's hurt. And now just do pay-per-view. And now the casual fans don't know about these, these boxers. Chris, Chris, you know how many young kids have never seen a fight? They all come on oh, late God. and they're all pay-per-view. Yep. Okay, yep. or you know what I mean? Like, like you have to pay. There's a lot of people. Do not kid yourself. You're watching it with your friends in a group. A lot of people don't have that luxury. There's nobody's right. house to go to to watch it. They don't have $89 to pay. So you have, we grew up as kids. I, I grew up, I'm so old, I used to listen to a transistor radio in my bed because they used to broadcast fights, Chris, on right. the radio. Right. right. They don't do that anymore. There are no fights on the radio. Right. Right. No, it's, it's, it's a mess. And so hopefully they are going to take But I do believe this. what you said this. This is about the TV deal. This is on the yeah. table, and if you're ESPN or what is it, the WB Sports, which was Turner, Turner, right? If you're not, if you're not pushing back, something's wrong with you to say. Right? I know you want all this money, but we've been burned so many big games, and we're not going to pay this if we don't have some some assurances that these guys are going to play because we're not going to pay for this. And I'll say this, Rob, and I, you heard me in the interview with Eddie House. How I mean, LeBron James is freaking twenty one year, twenty first year in the league. And playing tremendously. Still a top 10 player. And he used to play 82 games and 40 minutes a game early in his career. And didn't load manage until the last few years when, when he's older and he, he's been hurt and all that stuff. Uh, Tim Duncan. Now, the Spurs, Rob, are the face of load management. No doubt. Tim Duncan, his first six years in the league, Rob, he averaged 39 minutes a game and only missed a total – of nine games in his first six years. So they didn't start low managing or like Duncan didn't low manage early in his career. David Robinson didn't low manage. This was a relatively new development and, and David Pop Stern one. jumped yeah. on him. Yeah. Greg Pop and Pop coached Duncan, but it just, I'm sure Rob what happened and you could probably find this out. I'm sure they had doctors at some point in, the mid 2000 aughts, you know, 2010, right. 2009, whenever that was, that came in and told them like, hey, you know, if you want to, you need to cut back on some of these guys' minutes. The science is telling us blah, blah, blah. And so, um, but thank God the NBA has come out and said, that's hogwash. Yeah, I, right, I, like, I like that it's on the record that they've said it. You know yep, what I mean? Like, yep, I, I, love I agree. It. 